I love it. And, and I, I've served on a committee for about, I don't know how many years now, where I work with our officials in, in our league. I do all the prelim film work. And one of the things I do know is I get some of their interpretation, which is kind of crazy sometimes, what they're thinking and what we think as coaches. But if it's a normal kickoff, until the body is completely past the line of scrimmage, they won't play outside. So we basically work all the time. We rarely work full kickoff, but we'll work this day get off. And our whole thought process is we want to end up when the ball is being kicked, basically with one foot inside the line. And we just spin any more kick off. And now, if you're gonna go for an onside kick, then you better have both feet behind the line. Okay? And it, they're very specific, and they will not, they will not call. We've never been called. We'll have, we're pretty consistent. I went back and looked at all our phone from this year. We got almost everybody sitting there straddling the line when the ball's being kicked. I'll take the extra. We got some slow guys, so we got to make sure we work to get them down the field a little bit better. We have three stations we run with our kickoff team whenever we have our 10-minute period because we'll only do about three full kicks down the field, that's it. So we run these three stations. This first station is normal, we're gonna be about five yards apart, okay? And Bruce here, I'm on the left, and, and when I was the head coach at Luther for five years, Bruce actually played for, played for me there, so that's why I'm kind of using Bruce right here. And of course, Tom was at UWL there as well, so Tom's gonna to be the, the offense man, the blocker, Okay, in this situation, the first technique we teach is we think in stages of you have avoidance when you're more than 15 yards away from the ball carrier. With that avoidance, you're trying to eliminate contact. You do not want contact. Then we talk about avoidance when you're within that 10 to 15 yards from the ball carrier, coming back every turn, man. And then the next avoidance comes within. 10 yards. So we're going to work all three of those phases within our stations. And what we do is, I'll take uh, one station, uh, Mike Schmidt, our defense coordinator, has one station, and Tyler Simmons, our linebacker coach, has the other station. We just rotate. I kind of run the clock, but I know how many reps we want to get in each station. Boom, we just get them circled around, and that's our time. The first one is that I'm going to talk about is, what do you do when you're still a long ways away? Okay, outside of 15. And actually got this technique came from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, when we were uh, at Luther, I had a young coach, a guy named Benny Boyd, uh, one heck of a coach, and even a better person. And he came back, and his, I remember his first words out of his mouth was, Mike, we gotta put this technique in. This is unbelievable, this is exactly what we need for our kickoff team. We've been running it ever since, and Bruce was part of that. And, and play defense back for Benny, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about. All right, and it's called under pad, and that's just, this is comes straight from the Steelers and what they teach. So what we're going to do is, and we're going to imagine we're going to kick left. So Bruce is coming down, the kick is going left. As Bruce is coming down, here comes the offensive man. What he's going to do is you're going to stand right there because we're not going to move this guy at all. He's going to step with his near foot. We're going that way, going to right. There you go. He's going to come in there. He's going to try to step by him, but at the same time, he's going to try to dip and get his back turned to this offensive man. Okay. And part of it is you want to do this as fast as possible, so that when we're coming by here, you're coming by, and we're here, and we're stepping through, and you get your back. The goal is I'm looking to see if we can get one penalty a year, somebody blocking us in the back from a distance. Okay. That, that's our goal. So what we're going to do on this drill is Bruce coming here, he's going to jog by it and then step through. He works his under pad. And then what we want to try to do is you work the under pad. And one of the things you learn as you do this drill for a while, you're going to do the under pad. The next important phase of it is take this arm that you had dragging behind and throw that back so you end up in a stacked position on the offensive man. Because you want to get the stack. So what, if you kick off your turn, you don't want that. 
and the kickoff team you do. So all we're going to do is simply just jog five yards. Bruce is coming. He underpads. He throws right back, and he's coming to staff. And that's a drill. Bruce, would, if we do this on the field, how we do it is Bruce would go. He'd get about five yards past, turn around, then Tom goes, and then Bruce would go, then Tom would go. Point and we a couple points, guys. A couple things here. I'm thinking about driving up here for Tom's clinic is the transferability. So you're teaching this as a D lineman. You're teaching this as a receiver. You're especially teaching this as a receiver for sure is to get back into a stack position on your fade field, correct? So I know in high school, I coach high school, you got a lot of guys playing a lot of different positions. So the drill you're using here to avoid him is the same thing you teach your receivers, your pass rush, etc. The other point I'd like to make is, is you know, Tom, his role in this drill is to stand there. He doesn't impede him at all, okay? Because I think if you get guys that are thinking it's a combative drill, it's a competitive drill, you want the guy to have confidence in the technique. So it's a defense drill, defense wins. Mm -hmm. Coach your guy up. That guy needs to be coached to not do anything to impede yeah. him. Make sense? Yes? So that's based on our technique. And it's surprising, uh, this year I went back on film, boy, boy, I started seeing a lot more of it. We finally got a uh, second year to do. Uh, of guys actually doing it, and I think there's a correlation because we had ended up leading the league in, in kickoff coverage. Okay, if I had to do a little bit more about some of the athletes we had running down in kickoff as well. So that's our, our first row. The next one is what we do with uh, you're in that 10 to 15 yard range, and, and there's no exact science on that. Okay, but what we're trying to do then is we call a, a stab and shed. And the reason we differentiate, because the next one's going to be called shock and shed. This is the stab and shed. This means that we're in that distance where we still want to really maintain everybody in the same lane. All right? So we're, we kicked left 100% of the time last year. Never changed it. Our kicker felt best. Okay? So we went left. Now, we... We are basically uh, a four and six kind of team, okay? Now, I have calls that one and two can crisscross, or three and four can crisscross, or two and three can crisscross, or six and eight. So I have different schemes according to what you're running, okay? But we always kick left. And so that way our players know which way to avoid. We're getting established it. We avoid left. We do under pad. We avoid to our left. There's no question of what's happening that way. So it's just something that, that we do. Okay? So now in the next one that we're really going to do, Bruce can do the same thing, except now he's going to stab. When we talk about the stab, is he still wants to keep this left arm free. So he's going to stab his right hand into the peck, right in that peck of Tom right here. He is working this, and what we do is we'll have a coach back there, and we'll have like three or four lines going at one time. Everybody's going to end up in this position, okay? So they're going to stab, and now if he needs, once he sees where the ball carrier is stepping to, he's going to take his other arm, he's going to grab that jersey, grab the bicep, and he's going to pull the blocker to his pocket, all right? So he's right there. So we stab it and pull. Okay, be violent. Be violent as you pull down, all right? He's going to come off, and we don't have to tackle on this one because it's actually been the next phase that we do the tackle part of it. It's just getting by there. We're going to keep doing that. We're going to get those reps, keep rotating around. Uh, guys who are in my defensive line talk know I hate lines, so we're going to get as many guys going as possible. We're going to spend about two minutes at each station. That's it. So our guys just get lined up and they go. Okay, so that's a stab and shed. The last one is, okay, we're in that area where, all right, this guy could really go in either way. Returner, and we, we know we gotta now make the play. We're within 10 yards, okay? Now we shock and shed. When we do the shock and shed, Bruce can do the same thing, except now if both hands are gonna come in the chest. We're gonna stay as head up as we can. Because we know we got to play either way. Everybody is doing this. Okay? So now you got to be a football player. We're going to shock this thing right here, and now we're going to try to push back if we can. All right? As best we can. 
once the runner re you know, determines which way they're going, and we have uh, Coach Smith runs this one, okay? So Mike would have me back here and have like three or four guys. He goes in this direction. Well, Bruce is going to pull that guy into the opposite side, down that pocket, and be ready here. And then we basically run what we call our triangle trap tackle, where they're coming in, and we get multiple guys. So Bruce is the nearest guy, all right? Give me, I need two more volunteers to make this really good. I right know, this ski is going to Larry going to come out? I'm with you. All right, good. I didn't write it. It's just not in Greek, okay? So you should understand. What if I pull a hand? Yeah, come over here. Just go line up right next to him. All right, good. You, ski, you and Tom are going to be the offensive guy. So now they're both coming up, all right? And they're both going to shock. And now I come this way, right here. Well, Bruce is going to pull him down in that direction. You're pulling down here. And you should form up so they're both in the back on this number. You know, the number that's closest to them. So we're going to compress that ball carrier. If I take off, they come in here, boom, and now I go in this direction. Oh, no, you just got to shoot out. All right, you take your butt. Okay, now I'm going to coach you up, okay? I'm going here. Which way you got to pull? You got to pull there. Bruce has got to pull there. So they come in here. So you're teaching that release, all right, from the shock in the shed where you're supposed to go. So what would, that's good guys, you're good. That's it. Good job. All right. Those are our three stations we run right there. So we come out and what we'll do is we go kick off. We go, our guys know that, you know, we can count our guys one through 10. All right, one, two, and three are always going to this station first. All right, four, five, and six always go to this station. And the rest of the guys go the other station. Our safety, all right, was always the first gen, right? Okay, is still going to work on these drills, even though he's a safety. It uh, makes it easier for us. He's not going to just stand there. So we do those three three drills. We go two minutes to station. Boom, boom, boom. Two, four, six. Okay. We're going to get up there. Depending on time of the year, we might take a, a get off. All right, for each one, and then we'll kick one deep or two deep for one of the groups. And that's it. And we just work that technique. It doesn't matter what scheme. My job as a you know, special team guy then is got to know which crisscrosses we want to use according to different designs. So I, I want to know who you're doubling, and I'm going to get my double guy to be crisscross somewhere else. So I'm always going to chart which guy's double being double team. That's our our kickoff uh, progression. 